Stream starting soon in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sir, just what are we facing here? A relic of the old world. Ready your men, Captain. We will only get one chance. Ready your men. And remember, when you hear the whispers, call for help. Do not attack. Ooh, chat. Oh, I do. I have a drops enabled in my channel, chat. What do you think he was on about? It's Dolman, right? Uh, yeah. Then Dolman. Shut your damn mouth. Ugh, why do I always get stuck with these rookies? <laughs> Hey, the kid's got a mean cleave. Give him a chance. Quiet. Hmm? Already better than Path of Exile 1, Chad. Yikes. Already better than Path of Exile 1. Oh my god! Shallon! Am I gonna play the bear class? No, that's my class right there. Fire Sork. Oh, that's me, chat. That's me. A mean cleave, eh, Captain? Rookie can't even lift his own sword. Captain Oren? Captain? Uh oh, Captain? he's dead, chat. He's dead. It's here. Rain, send the signal! Send it, light it! What the fuck? Rain! Oh, they use a curse word, chat. Demonetize. On my back, laid off! Come on, come on! I'm ready. I'm Freddy. I'm Freddy. His name is Freddy. Oh. It, it, it's a man. No. It's, it's Diablo not. 4. It's D4. Destroy him. Run. Run. Mephesto. You killed your captain, bro. He was just a necromancer. Feet, lad. Captain, I you'll be fine. Here. Dude, why is my main character such a pussy? A map. Well, minus one inventory with this thing in there. What is it? Stash tap gang. Get the body. Stop. Mortal. It can still be contained. You don't know what you have unleashed. Your kind no longer control this world. We cannot destroy your body, it's true. But you will watch you as will. we destroy everything you have built. Voice acting's on point. Find him! I like it. Feed. Grow, my child. I'll make sure you can eat your fill. Act 1. Path of Exile 2.
Hi, I'm Jonathan Rogers, Game Director on Path of Exile 2. Now, Path of Exile 2 is going into early access in around two weeks on December yeah. the 6th. Uh -huh. But even though it's early access, this isn't just some small taste. You could the release is early, huge. early access in this live stream, we're for going an to be additional introducing 30. everything you can expect. So without further ado, let's roll the gameplay trailer. If you pay an additional $30, chat, you can get an early, early access. But impermanent. Shh, be quiet. This Life is gameplay trailer. Are mortal Shh. enemies. And yet, bound to one another. Mm. The continuation of life must be protected at all costs. Some have said, so. My methods are brutal. Oh to my this, lord. I say, There can be no salvation without sacrifice. Snacrifice. Oh, that's my class. That's my class right there. I'm gonna be a bow person. Oh, that's my class. Spirit born. Oh, flame. That's me. That's not me. That's definitely not me. Nope. Oh! Oh my lord, look at this Paragon point. Holy! Paragon board. That's me, my tits are out. Oh my lord! Shooting, bam, 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 bam. Incinerate. Crossbow. Oh my god, the gameplay is so fast. <laughs> Oh, uh, freeze! We are faced with the end, and I will do what I must. Nodes, what is this? What is this Sid Meister civilization thingy? Oh my God, chat! I could transform into a, a succubus. That's my class. Path of Exile 2. Those who obsess with death, let them soon be acquainted with it. Now, I'm, as you just saw, I'm ready to even RMT. In access, Path of Exile 2 is a big Take game. my money. It's actually been five years since we announced POE 2, and over that time, we've revealed a lot. But it's been in bits and pieces. It's pretty hard to keep track of it all. So today we're going to do a full rundown of all the content that will be available at the start of Early Access. Okay. Classes, character progression systems, and for the first time, a full overview of the end game. This is going to be a big one, so get comfortable. Oh, I love big ones. For 20 ones. years, Rayclast yeah. has been free from any sources of corruption. But the Count of Ogham, tempted by promises of power, intends to harness it once more. Dude, which class turns into a succubus? Monsters That's, are mutated, I want to play that and madness one. is spreading. Under the dark influence of corruption, Executioner. the Count doles out sentences of death to any who would question him. Ooh. Probably witch. Yeah, probably the witch, right? And this is where you find yourself at the start of POE 2. Oh, a beach! That's where you find Explore the fight dark Hillock. forests of Ogham. Traverse the barren plains of What the ah, What's going on? The Vasteri Desert. And What is going on? Is it me? Into the jungle ruins of Utsal, an ancient Val city. There are challenges. Is it me? Is it me? Stop it. Roaming merchants, and of course, unique bosses. No two areas are the same. It falls to you to it's track everyone? down the seed of corruption, the source of all this devastation. On the way, you'll face fearsome monsters, get meet strange your... characters, ah. forge unlikely bonds, and uncover lost civilizations. I'm not paying thirty dollars for this. But first, you'll need to pick a class. Now, early access will initially have six classes of Chad, this is what their servers are going to be like on day one, just saying. The Monk is a fast and furious melee fighter. He Worse. dashes in and out of combat, and his mechanics involve building up and keeping momentum. What is this? Like all classes in POE2, you'll want to use a wide variety of skills to mix and match different combos. To 
What the? What is this? Get new skills, you will first need to find skill gems. Is there a YouTube link? Using a link? skill gem will open the gem cutting Chad, game, is there which a YouTube shows all link? the active skills available in POE 2. You can choose an existence. Technical! Oh my god! Get your stuff together! Oh. This is classic Path of Exile chat. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the indie company, Triple G. Welcome to an indie company. What are we facing here? This better not restart from the very big. Precious. They're fast forwarding it. Yeah. Power <laughs> and tends to harness. <laughs> They're fast forwarding it, chat. We're there back. Are 21 active skills for quarter staves. We're back. So this just scratches the surface of the options that you have. By end game, you'll be dashing from pack to pack, spewing where you find yourself at oh, the start. They rewind it again. They went too far. Explore we, the we dark go back. forests of Ogham. <laughs> Traverse the barren plains of the Vesteri Desert <laughs> and delve into the jungle ruins of Utsal, an ancient Val city. There are challenging monsters, hidden runes. Ooh, that's my lost class camps right there. Ooh, that's my class too. Roaming merchants and, of course, unique bosses. No two areas are the indie, same. Indie company. It falls to you to track down the seed of corruption, the source Ooh, of all this devastation. The seed of corruption. On the way, I need some good seed. Monsters, meet strange characters. Forge unlikely bonds and uncover lost civilization. Tits! I'm gonna get banned. But first, you need to pick a class. Okay, let's pick our class chat. Now, early access will initially have six classes available. Let's have a look at them. Okay. The let's monk see. is a fast and furious melee monk? fighter. Monk. Okay, so spirit born. He dashes born. in and out of combat, and his mechanics okay. involve building up and keeping momentum. Like all classes in PvP2, this class want to use so, a wide variety looks so of skills nice, to mix and match different combos. Not for me. To get um, new skills, you will first need to find skill not gems. Not for me. Using a skill gem will open the gem cutting menu, which shows all the active skills available okay. in PoE 2. Okay. You can choose an existing skill to level up, or choose to engrave a new one. Since this is a level 7 skill gem, even if you pick a new skill, it will immediately Chad, be level 7. Chad, are you going to play this one? So there's no harm in trying out something new. The monk primarily uses the quarter stuff. There are three schools of martial arts. Lightning. Nah, ice, yeah, it doesn't seem that great to me. And For me, win. I'm not too fond of to like to melee one. classes. The best combos are going to involve mixing elements of But all it three. doesn't look bad though. It looks Let's nice. Let's try killing palm. Like many monk skills, this can be used to quickly take advantage of a specific situation. If there's okay. an enemy on low life, you can use killing palm to dash to them okay, and kill them. Okay, killing palm. We like that this skill. This will provide a power charge. Then we can use a different skill to consume that power charge for a much more devastating love it, attack. Love it. Love it. The monk also has powerful combo Millie, skills. Uh, often Tempest Bell, for example, is a skill uh, that places boring, a giant fast, resonating agree. bell. I'm not a big Hitting fan the bell of melee. causes it to ring, dealing damage to all enemies around it. You can also do things like freeze or shock the bell, which will add elemental damage to the strikes. The monk you also has a variety of abilities to okay. empower his staff. If an enemy is close to being stunned, you can use Staggering Palm to punch them down. After that, any attack you do will shoot out wind. I wish the dash, the little roll that he did, was faster. There are 21 active skills for quarter You know, when, when he rolls, so it scratches it... the surface of the options that you have. Damn, this looks like, cool, though. Look at that. From pack to pack, at higher levels? Spewing projectiles and obliterating that kind of enemies doesn't look too combo bad. Attacks. At higher levels? Now, if you like a style of melee that's a little slower, but hits much harder, then the warrior is for you. He pounds the ground Damn. with big chunky attacks and shrug off the hits okay, of small enemies with large nice. amounts of This armor. is like barbarian, right? Even though the mace slams are slow, you never lose control. Longer attacks can be retarded as you Chad, is this for you? you? Is this class for you? if you find yourself committed to a long attack, you can dodge roll out Leave of Leave a comment down below if this is a class that you Among would play. Whichever class mesas, you're going to play. you'll find a variety of slams, fire yeah. attacks, war cries, and shield skills. This Here, looks, I'm this slam doesn't look ground, too bad. rending it apart with lines of fire. Any slam skill will then cause these fissures to erupt with lava. I can even run through them with a skill like Stampede to do huge amounts okay. of damage. The warrior can also use War Cry, which can empower your next skill. Seismic Cry, for example, will double any slams from your next attack. The Stampede counts as a slam, so I can double that for even oh. more craziness. That looks kind of nice, If you want to go nice, a little though. faster and be a little more defensive, so far, both a shield. of the classes look very good. Kiwi too, you can raise your shield at any time to block all damage from the front, even spells. While holding up your shield, your stun meter will build as you take damage. So be careful. If it reaches 100%, your stance will break and you will be vulnerable. Oh. 
Some enemies also have unblockable attacks, which are indicated by this red flash. If you see one of these coming, make sure to dodge out of the way. I watch people still get hit by that. Using a shield also gives you access to shield skills, like shield charge, which allows you to charge towards enemies. Dude, this and class is kind of nice. While charging, you're also blocking the whole time, so you have full damage immunity from the front. Yo, the this is nice. also has access to totems. Some totems have built-in abilities, like Shockwave Totem, which can be placed to stun nearby enemies and trigger aftershocks like those from the Earthquake. But you can also get Ancestral Warrior Totems, which allow you to use any slam skill yeah. in your repertoire. This is a meta skill, which means that it's a skill you can put other skills into. I can take a slam okay. like Sunder and socket it into my Ancestral Warrior Totem. Okay. Now when I summon him, he'll sit there and slam the monsters from a distance. Oh, dude, the uh, visual effects look skills for really nice. So there's a lot more to try out. But by end game, you're going to be dropping hammers from the sky, leaping fearlessly into combat. And it would be nice if he has like a stand stance where he could just charge through the whole map really yeah. fast, just shield bashing everything Time really for quickly. Some ranged attacks. Oh, this the is my class. Is primarily about the bow, but we wanted to make sure that she feels agile as well. In Peewee 2, you can shoot while moving. Combined okay. with all the skills the ranger has that allow you to jump around, you'll have a lot of mobility in combat. Okay. Bow skills have a variety of lightning, poison, ice, and physical attacks. That's me. Lightning attacks bounce around between targets. You can also oh, stick lightning dead. arrows in the ground, which explode when hit by the bounces, or electrocute enemies to take them out of combat. Ice attacks allow you to slow and freeze enemies to keep them away from you. This gameplay poison, does seem very you slow, though. Your enemies from afar, but also grow some interesting plants. It, it, it looks a little slow. With 21 bow skills and all the mobility and combo tools the ranger has, you can take advantage of every situation. By end game, you'll be creating hundreds of arrows, be they falling from the sky, bouncing yeah. around between enemies, or spraying out of tornadoes. Shoot! You might have noticed in the bottom left of the screen that the flask slots look a little different. Yeah. In Peewee 2, you have one dedicated life flask slot and one mana flask slot. Flasks gain charges. Oh as you my kill god, that's enemies. so much better than Path of Exile 1. Heal six or seven times if they're full. But that's not the only thing you can use charges for. Finally, Charms they copy Diablo 4. Charms are a new that will automatically defend you from various debuffs or damage types. Having trouble with getting frozen? A quick yeah. thawing charm. When it's fully charged, it will make you immune to freeze for three seconds if you get frozen. To recharge them, just kill more monsters. You can gain more slots for charms by upgrading your belt. What about mage blood, yeah? What about the mage blood? The mercenary wields a crossbow that can be loaded Whoa. with different ammo types, offering versatility, power, Whoa, and Whoa, look at this bow! All classes in Path of Exile 2 can be controlled with oh, WASD. Oh my god, look at the visual effects, exactly chat. Like I hope you guys are ready to crossbow, fucking you upgrade your computers, because y'all not going to be able to play rifles, this with your toasters. But not only that, there are a wide variety of more interesting elemental ammos too. It's very Chad, it's fast time. to switch between ammo it's types time to as upgrade. long as you already have them loaded, which makes the mercenary able to combo abilities together for devastating effect. Use Glacial Bolt to create walls of ice to separate okay. enemies, then switch to Fragmentation Rounds to explode the ice, dealing massive AoE damage. If I come across an armored enemy, I I'm can use armor boy. piercing rounds to break their armor and then high velocity rounds to take them down. So okay. perhaps I could fire a gas grenade to poison enemies before detonating the cloud with an explosive shot for massive damage. Feels like a class I would play. Um the crossbow if you looks kind of fun. Some suppressing fire, More you fun can than the bow. artillery ballistas. These have a minimum range, so you'll want to prepare your position carefully before moving in. There are 22 I can't wait for the, the mage to be shown, right, chat. Game, you'll mage, be I'm a mage main. Sky as you litter the battlefield I'm with a grenades witch. and pepper your enemies with your automatic shotgun. If you're looking to take a back seat and let your minions do the work, oh, here we go. the witch should be your choice. Here we go. She can call forth hordes of undead monsters witch, to fight chat. for her while casting powerful chaos spells that debilitate her enemies. Occult skills are some of the most varied in the game, with skeletons, noxious spells, specialty minions, curses, and sacrificial magic. Before we talk about minions, we'll have to talk about yeah. a new resource in Path of Exile 2 called Spirit. Spirit. This is a spirit gem, which allows you to pick from a range of persistent skills. Uh -huh. All classes have a variety of these skills, which can add some very interesting effects, like Arctic Armor, which does cold damage to enemies that hit you, or Raging Spirits, which summon fiery skulls each time you cast Ooh, a fire spell. We love this. For the witch, though, we'll want to be using our spirit to create permanent minions. These minions will be revived automatically when they die, so you don't have to worry about resummoning them all the time. Ooh, that's kind of nice. 
So this is like the necromancer. Here, I'm using the skill screen to allocate which minions I would like in my horde. You can see the spirit cost oh. of each one. Skeletal warriors are cheap, but weak. Useful for tanking damage and distracting enemies. I like this chat. But I want more heavy hitters in my army. You can so have healers, too. I'm going to some too. warriors and instead add skeletal arsonists. Permanent minions come with special active abilities called That's command That's kind of nice, spells. dude. You can order these guys I to try this your own class. minions for even more damage and area of effect. If you want a bigger army, you'll need a scepter. This new weapon type is imbued with even more spirit, allowing you to summon Walking even more Walking simulator. And if you want an even bigger army than that, you can take advantage of corpses to summon true hordes of minions. Mm, but more what can a witch do while her army is at work? Well, she has a range of chaos spells to spread disease amongst your enemies, or bone skills mm, to I impel. do like to spread disease, or, you know, you could among other them to make things. Them weaker so your horde can take them down. There are 25 active occult skills. By the end game, you'll be the leader of a fearsome army of the dead, consuming everything in its path. Ooh, Chad, I can't wait. I can't wait to be the a witch. The sorceress bends the elements to her oh, will, using this is them to unleash this devastation on her foes. This is more like me. This classic spellcaster weaves a flurry do. of elemental uh, magic from afar. I think she's going to turn into a succubus, Chad. This is me. The elemental skills this have class everything was you made might expect and more. Fireballs, icy explosions, lightning storms, you get the idea. Each spell is unique and has many different ways to build and combo with others. Look at that. That just elements. looks infinitely more fun For than example, all the other classes. Flame Wall conjures a burning line oh. that not only damages oh. enemies, but also empowers all projectiles I'm, that pass through. I'm not in chat. If you place a wall My and fire lightning isn't spots full anymore. It, they'll gain extra fire damage. It's a good idea to take advantage of the ability to automatically swap weapons when you use certain skills. Having a special staff with bonuses to fire skills and another with bonuses to lightning wow. skills can really power up a combo like this. The sorceress can also take advantage of powerful trigger gems. For example, you could grab the cast and ignite yeah. gem and use it with firestorm. Okay. As you ignite enemies, a counter will Shoot. go up in the top left corner. When it's full, a firestorm will automatically be cast to the enemy that was ignited. We like that. We like that. There are like 25 that. active elemental skills. By end game, you'll be firing off projectiles Dude, left and right. Dude, look at this in game. Holy moly! Now. Those are the characters that will be available at the start of early access. But we will be adding six more character classes with just as many skills and options as these. There's a lot more to come. Where, where's the succubus? There's one more important thing to mention about skills. Even though we talk about them as belong to each class, in reality, there are no restrictions. You can use all these skills on any class so long as you have the attributes. For example, a poison ranger might want to try out using occult curses to increase her poison damage. Or a monk might want to trigger elemental ice walls to use with his glacial cascade combo. Ah. The possibilities for cross-class combos are practically unlimited. Okay, that's pretty We're nice. We're looking forward to what kind of things you guys might find. More diversity, now, more builds. Now, Pathmix a game um, known for build customization, and we haven't even scratched the surface of what is possible yet. That's kind of nice. So let's talk about support, support gems. Support gems! Path of 2 has a system of support gems that can be combined with your active skills to dramatically change the way they work. Yeah. If you find a support gem, then right-clicking it will open up this screen. Here you will find a variety of recommended support gems for each of your skills that you can pick between. Uh huh. For example, this is a multiple projectiles support gem and can be used to add multiple projectiles to any skill. Normally, when you fire a grenade, it'll look like this. But if we add multiple projectiles, then you get three of them. Ooh. Once you have the gem, you can also freely move it between any of the skills in your character. If you want to have a multi-shot sniper rifle instead, then simply move the gem over to your high-velocity round It seems pretty um, Generally easy Generally speaking, if it sounds understand. like a support gem should work with a skill, then right? it will work. So it's a good idea to experiment. I like this. A little more Note basic than Path of Exile 1. you can support gem on your character. So you'll want to think which carefully is, uh, about which really supports welcome. can be used best with each skill for maximum damage. Yeah, a now, lot more if you simplified. Want to stick to the recommendations, I like it. You should have a perfectly good time. But if you want to experiment a bit more, then uncheck that recommended button and you can see the full list of supports that will work with your skill. Okay, there are okay. hundreds of support gems to choose from. And even we don't know the results of all the possible ways these can interact. Each skill can have up to five supports socketed into Hi. it. And if you're clever, you can come up with some pretty interesting ideas. Now, I all like of this it. is just scratching the surface. You can make frost vortexes, break people's armor, make minions explode, make skills repeat. Ooh. Make enemies set each other on fire, cull enemies, or pin them to the ground. The Supports that you drastically are change in the behavior this of your skills and create your own unique build, or at least follow someone's OP build guide. So, speaking of builds, let's talk about one of the most iconic Path of Exile systems the passive skill tree. Yes, it's huge. Um, there are over 1,500 nodes on there. 
Um, now, a lot of people open the tree and can get a little intimidated at first, but try not to be scared. Um, there are lots of options, but at its core, it's pretty simple. Each level, you get one point to put into the tree. Each class starts at a different location, but they all share the same tree. Okay. Around your section of the tree, you'll find relevant bonuses for your character. You should be safe Sounds in the knowledge basic. that there aren't many wrong choices yeah. here. Almost all the starting nodes will be useful for your character in some way. But if you do happen to make a choice you regret, you'll be able to respec any nodes you've taken by spending a little bit of gold. Okay, not bad. We like that. Now, the tree is generally divided up into clusters which have similar W, themes. that's a W. In each cluster, you will find small nodes that give simple bonuses like increased damage. But the real power comes from notables. Notables normally have much more interesting bonuses, and they tend to care a lot more about how your build works and what that's skills you're really using. That's really good, though, Chad. For example, Respecting? in the mercenary area of the tree, so they went this one gives a 25% chance with a cross skills with it, to right? not consume a bolt. Last epoch, you spend a little bit of silver to respect. To second time. This one gives a chance for projectiles to rebound um, off terrain, as well as giving you I some pierce D4 chance to make well. that more likely. Note that even though this is in the mercenary section, this would work it with isn't projectiles POE1. from all classes. So there are often reasons to go to different um, areas of the tree. In order to get between these clusters, you will generally have to I allocate guess, nodes yeah, in it is in Path of Excel 1, but you have to attribute nodes use the market, you to pick right? Which attribute you would like to use. So it's very you, easy to you get have points to go for an any extra attribute step. that your gear might need. You can change which attribute these nodes give you for half price at the respect. I don't vendor. remember how it works. In addition to notable, well, you can you will spin gold now. Oh, okay, keystones. you can spin gold now. Keystones okay, okay. have both an upside and a downside, and often require changing your entire build to design around them. A great example is Giant's Blood, which allows you to wield two it's hand a, weapons uh, this in a single league hand. Feature. Oh, so it's new. Of them. You can use a two-hand mace with a shield, or even dual wield them. Well, how about uh, Mind Over Matter, which okay, makes all okay. damage go to your mana pool first before your life pool, but you lose 50% of your mana regen. Skills like these can be I tough like to build chat. around, but if you're up for the challenge, they can be very rewarding. I like this, I like this tree. As we showed you earlier on the Sorceress, weapon you can swap specialization. between weapon on the fly as you use certain skills. One of the new features in Path of Exile 2's passive tree uh -huh. is that you can choose to have your passive tree change as you switch between weapon sets to take okay. advantage of specific bonuses on the tree. For the sorceress, you might want to change between fire and lightning specialization. Or you could switch between one hand and a two hand setup in order to be able to block boss attacks while following up with heavy hits from your bigger mace. Or perhaps you could have Boom. a full curse setup on your witch to debuff enemies before switching to a chaos degen build for maximum damage. If you want to stick with just one weapon set, you can just use these specialization points as bonus points to invest however you like. Yeah, these but are some pretty cool changes. Will find plenty of opportunities with this system. Yeah. You can get weapon Is specialization POE very points throughout friendly? the campaign from optional um, bosses I believe and quests. For POE example, two if I will to definitely the be Bell, that. I'll get a weapon specialization book. I think they they have. There are they lots of other permanent boosts available from the campaign too. On the map, you can see icons that indicate the many optional encounters you can find. Some of them have permanent character boosts, and others have powerful items. If you're having trouble getting past a boss, it might be a good idea to explore and see what you can find. For example, if you defeat Blackjaw the Remnant, you'll gain a permanent increase to fire resistance. One of the most important finds are spirit bonuses. You can okay. find the first one here in the canopy in Act 1. Defeat the boss in this area to acquire a permanent addition of spirit. Oh, we like that. The permanent buffs you gain from spirit are very powerful, and every class will find a use for them. So make sure you hunt down these upgrades. There's one in each act. Now we haven't even talked about the most important element of items. character progression. Items. That's why we're all here, right? Yeah. Items in Path of Exile can be broken down into four rarity groups. Normal, magic, rare, and unique. Okay. One of the things you're going to want to do as you play through the campaign is upgrade the items you find. And you can do that with currency items. An orb of transmutation will allow you to upgrade a normal item to a magic item with one mod. You can then apply an Orb of Augmentation to add a second mod, then use a Regal Orb to add a third mod, and upgrade it to a Rare. Finally, you can use some Exalted Orbs to add more mods to your Rare to a total of six mods. Oh? One of the things we think is really important is to make these options available to use as you play. All the items that add mods are much more common than they were in Path of Exile 1, so that you can use them throughout your campaign playthrough. 
We That's want you cool. to find things on the ground that can be crafted into upgrades much more frequently. As well as making the drop rates on these items much more common, you can also get them by disenchanting unwanted gear at the magic item vendor. If you disenchant uh -huh. magic items, you can build up to an orb of transmutation. And by disenchanting rares, you can build up to regal orbs. Another important area of crafting items in PoE2 is sockets. Some items you find will have sockets that can have Ezemite runes sockets. placed in them that add more mods to the item. If I insert this glacial rune into my helmet, it will give extra cold resistance. This is a great way to solve problems that you have with your build, like resistances or damage. If we you love find socketed sockets. items that you don't have a use for, you can take them to the salvage bench in town to work towards an artificer's orb. This will allow you to add sockets to your existing items. Okay. Body armors and two-hand weapons can have up to two sockets, while the rest of your armor and one-hand weapons can only have one socket. You can also salvage items with quality socket, to create items chat. like armor scraps socket. or whetstones. These will allow you to increase the quality of your items for an up to 20% boost. Okay. If you don't want to disenchant or salvage your items, you can always sell them for gold. Gold can be used to buy items from vendors, and we've tried to do a lot to make sure that the items they have for sale are actually useful. Every time you level up, they get more stock, so make sure to check back often. Other vendors offer a gamble. Pay a flat amount of gold and you'll get a random item of a specific type. Oh. This could be a great way to improve your gear, gotcha. if you're lucky. Gold is also used to respec your passive skills. Take advantage of the system to experiment with your tree and rework it as required. The other thing you might want to use gold for is the currency exchange. This allows you to exchange currency items with other um, players on they, an open They didn't market. have gold in, in Path of Exile 1, fee. right? Now, all items in Path of Exile are freely Did they, tradable. Is it a recent we thing now in Path of Exile 1? Except gold. They have now? Yeah. This now, league? most gear in Path of Exile 2 is randomly generated, but there's another type that isn't. Uniques. Uniques! They are especially rare, each with a handcrafted set of unusual mods which can dramatically change a character's build. They're not just better rare items. They can do much stranger things that can fundamentally change your character. They ported it from two, two to one. Corpse will make any corpses ah, you run through explode into good. clouds of poison. Good changes. The Sands of Silk is a body armor that changes your dodge roll into a blink, morphing you into Ooh. sand as you teleport past Ooh, your foes. Oh, I need this. And of course, some uniques are just pure hits of dopamine, like Quill Rain, which just turns your bow attacks into full auto by doubling your attack speed. Each unique is something that you can build your character around. We try to make sure that most unique items have a potential use at endgame, even if you find them early on. Most. And as you can see, every single unique item comes with custom art to match. The last character progression system Ascension. that you can do during the campaign is Ascension. Starting in Act 2, you will come across Ascension Trials, tests that you must complete to unlock your Ascension class. We'll explain these Please no labs. Soon, oh, of first, course they have a labs. Ascending can do for your character. Here they come. Here they Each come. Each class has access to three ascendancy classes, but at the start of early access, only two per class will be available. Ascendancy classes are unique to each character class. Oh so my God, Chad, the witch looks they so cool. They can drastically cool. affect how you build your Look character. Look at the witch. As a sorceress, you could become a storm weaver, a master of the elements. Oh. Tempest Caller causes elemental storms to be summoned each time you do a critical hit with a spell. With Strike twice, you can stack two copies of Shock for more damage. And going deeper into the tree, you can make all your damage types of Labs are best. Make you know what? I actually really like that about Path of Exile 1, the Alternatively, labs. Alternatively, you could become a Chronomancer and command Chronomancer. time itself. Chronomancer? She literally has the ability to stop time with time freeze. Dude, I love this Not time that, freeze. she has many oh other time manipulation my God. abilities. Using Temporal Rift, she can teleport back to a previous Dude, that's location. so cool. Resetting her life and mana back to what it was. Or with Time Snap, she can reset all her cooldowns and cast back, all her chat. spells again. This is my main game. On I the quit warrior, everything you can else. Between the Warbringer or the Titan, the Warbringer channels the might of his ancestors to gain tremendous power. Using Answered Call, you can summon and spirits. Oh, this is the Druid, right? Your totems. Dude, that that with little beast just heritage, queefed all you can over the place. your body in a protective layer that absorbs all damage until it breaks. Warcaller's bellow allows you to explode the corpses of your enemies. And with Great Wolf's Howl, you can ignore the cooldowns That's of your warrior. That's Warrior? Let all that anger out. The Titan class is all about hitting big. With Earthbreaker, every oh, slam has a chance to create an aftershock. With that crushing looks impacts, cool too, though. every hit becomes a crushing I don't blow, think any class looks bad in this game. All of them look pretty nice. With Surprising Strength, you can take advantage of stunned enemies to deal 40% more damage. 
As a ranger, you might choose to be a Deadeye, an expert markswoman who can take down foes with style. Uh. With endless munitions, every attack gains an extra projectile. With gathering winds, she gains a small increase this to movement speed. This is the only class that looks attack. a little, a little careful, lame. She loses them when getting hit. This, this looks a little With eagle lame. eyes, she will never miss, allowing you to stop wasting all those passive points on accuracy. Alternatively, you could become a Pathfinder. Okay, okay let's check out Pathfinder. Poison. She can choose from one of several throwable concoctions, allowing her to spend her flask charges to throw explosive bottles. It's the Zoomer class, though. This looks slow. A bleeding concoction will make your enemies bleed, while a fulminating one can shock your enemies, allowing you to do extra damage. I don't know about this class, chat. Contagious contamination allows her to spread poisons between her foes, while overwhelming toxicity doubles the number of stacks they can be infected by. Running Assault allows her to move much more quickly while firing, while Relentless yeah. Pursuit makes her totally immune it's to not, being slowed it's by It's not, enemies. like, it's not a lot of explosions and bang bang. The Witch can ascend bang. into the Infernalist or the Blood Mage. Ooh. As an Infernalist, she can summon a loyal Hellhound companion. The Hellhound That's sets me. enemies on fire, Infernalist. as well as taking a percentage of the damage if the Infernalist gets hit. With Pyromantic Pact, you can turn Ooh. your mana into Infernal Flame. As you cast more spells, the flame builds up, and if it overflows, you'll take damage. This was made for me. Using Bringer of Flame, you'll want to make sure you keep the flames topped up. While your Infernal Flame is above 30%, all damage from you and your minions will ignite enemies. She can also transform <gasps> into a literal demon. While in demon form, she takes an increasing amount of damage, but her cast speed and damage increase rapidly as well. How so is that class not made demon, for me, bro? Make sure you stack a lot of life recovery. She can also become a blood mage, a master of life and energy. All blood mages must pay the price of making skills cost life as well as mana, but in exchange, every monster they kill will drop life remnants, which allow them to quickly gain back that life. With crimson power, she can gain large amounts of extra life, and with vitality, Dude, slicing, which she can actually use her spells to leech life back nice. as well. Once you've got a significant amount of life, you can use gore spike to make your critical hits deal incredible amounts of damage. A monk who is in tune with the elements might become an invoker. With elemental expression, the invoker will create waves of elemental power each time he does a critical strike. With faith as a choice, oh. you gain the ability to meditate, allowing you to double your energy shield. Choose between I am the blizzard or I am the thunder to specialize in cold or lightning. I am the blizzard. And I shall rage will allow you to turn into an I unbound I am avatar. the sun. Each time you apply a status ailment to an enemy, you gain unbound fury. That's okay. You have enough. Transform Looks really into an nice, right? To deal way more damage and inflict even more elemental ailments. Yeah. Some monks choose to reach into the darkness instead. Darkness. The acolyte of Chayula can exchange their mastery of spirit for darkness, a resource that can be utilized to both absorb and deal damage. The Shroud of Darkness will protect you from all damage incoming, but if you take Grasp of the Void, you will deal extra chaos damage from all the darkness you have. Okay. Their dark pact offers greatly increased resistances to Is chaos damage. Is he saying dark and or can duck? Allow their mana leech to not only happen instantly, but apply to their energy shield as well. Another node you can take is Waking Gloom, which allows you to see into the domain of the Breach Demons. Dark. There you will see the flames of Chiyula. I'm so excited, chat. So what, what, what class are you uh, looking forward to playing? Obviously, I'm playing the Demon the Succubus has a Fire job to do. Chick. But which job suits you? You might choose to become a witch hunter. I'm the witch. Obsessive chat. rituals will give you a sorcery ward, allowing you to defend yourself against elemental witch. hits in exchange Incinerator for less defense witch. against attacks. With zealous inquisition, yeah. your enemies have a 10% chance to explode on death. The chance is doubled against demons and undead. Witch. With judge, jury, and executioner, your initial hit against enemies can deal up to 30% of their life and damage if you're lucky. This is great for hunting powerful bosses. And with Witchbane, you can break your enemy's concentration, preventing them from casting spells as often as they would usually do. You could also choose to become a Gemling Legionnaire, enhancing your abilities by embedding gems directly in your flesh. Integrated efficiency will give you Crossbow extra skill doesn't slots. look bad. Thermatological infusion gives you extra maximum resistances as you sock up more and more support gems. Adaptive capability allows Demon you to use chick. any color of gem I'm without not coughing. worrying You're about coughing. Actions while Crystalline Potential adds extra quality bonuses to every gem socketed into your character. 
So those are the ascendancy classes for the start of early Dude. access. But one thing we haven't talked about Ellie yet just is wants how you ascend to be in the first tied place. to a big piece of wood. Ascension and Path of Exile 2 requires <laughs> completion of one of the great trials. Trials! Which you'll find as you progress through the campaign. Labs! Each one is associated with one of the major cultures of Rayclast. Located in the Vasteri Plains are the Maraketh, a culture of rich tales and brutal traditions, hey, who must do chat. whatever it takes to Labs survive in the desert. Labs is pretty fun. That was one of the funnest the things for me in Path of Exile 1. The culture is a Sekima, and it is not a title given I freely. I like it. All aspirants must complete the Trial of the Sekimas, a grueling gauntlet that will test their strength, I actually will, think this is a really good thing. To enter, a warrior of the Maraketh must prove their worth by trapping the soul of a djinn in a coin. And you are no a different. sense of accomplishment when defeating labs feels really, really nice. Once you have earned your coin, it may be placed on the relic altar to begin the trial. Uh, the trial the did second, you ever speed run them? Has its own no, I don't overcome. think so. In this room, each rare monster you no. kill will send its blood to the chalice in the center of the room. Once the chalice is filled, you will be able to proceed. While fighting monsters in the trial, you will need to be very careful. Each hit will not only hurt you, but will damage Ooh, your honor. Oh, this is so nice. We're uh, Are we back? Are we back? Baby, come back. Okay, we're back. The trial of the Sekimas is not your kind of playstyle, or you're finding sorry, it too chat. difficult. You sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm you back. can gain all your ascension points from just one, or mix and match them. It's up to you. For early access, we will have two trials as options, with a third trial coming later for the full release. While exploring the Vile jungle, you'll discover the Temple of Chaos. Before the Vile embraced the science of corruption, I'm back. their civilization worshipped chaos. This ancient trial was once used by the Vile to test their high priests. My Wi-Fi minutes were up, Chad. I'm sorry. The high priest of the Vile must show willingness to risk everything to gain power. Entry to the trial requires a token from a strange entity known only as the Trial Master. For those in which so he sees potential, we're still watching the trials, right? Yeah. Many have attempted these trials in search of greatness. Most have perished. Will mm. you be able to defy the odds? Before I will. you begin each chamber, the Trial Master will offer you a reward and a choice. Choose one of three tribulations to affect you through the rest of the trial. These modifiers might okay. beef up the monsters, curse the player, or add environmental Curses. hazards like turrets or trap runes. Ooh. In this case, we'll be picking shocking turrets. Okay, so you get to select your debuff. As you enter the room, the trial master will fill it with hazards to test your commitment. In this case, you must destroy all the monsters that fill the room while dealing with the lightning projectiles Ooh. from the shocking turrets. Okay, shocking tur uh, turrets sound like the easiest. Just don't get shot, forehead. OP class? This class seems really nice, right? After each room, you will need to make a choice. Take the rewards you have earned so far, or go double or nothing. Increase your rewards, but take on more risk. Okay. Each tribulation you add is minor on its own but they quickly stack on top of each other and can become overwhelming. There are many types of chambers in the trial. Each will test your resolve in different ways. This one simply requires you survive for a certain amount of time. Another requires you to escort the stone idol through the level as elevators full of monsters descend to attack you. Should you be able to get through the first three chambers, you will face your first boss. The order of the bosses is random. And combined with the tribulations you have selected, the fight will never feel the same. After defeating the boss, you may claim your rewards. Of course, there are the items. I hate also escort right missions, dude. If you already did the trial of the Sekimas, then you can claim two more points to add to your ascendancy class. Yeah. Now, it's possible to go much deeper. There are more bosses, rewards, yeah, go and risks in deeper. to take. But we'll talk more about that when we get to endgame. So how about we talk about that now? So far, we've only been showing you footage from the campaign. In game! But some people would argue that the end game is where the game truly begins. True! Something that happens almost every time a new action RPG launches is people saying, there isn't enough end game content. True! Well, we want to make sure that in PoE 2, people don't feel that way. Okay. And we actually only changed our development priority for this recently. The first three acts of PoE 2 already take around okay. 25 hours to complete if you're a new player. 
This is already a pretty significant campaign. On the other hand, people spend hundreds of hours in Endgame yeah. each league. Yeah. We realized that finishing the rest of the campaign for early access was actually a bad idea. Instead of having acts four to six in early access, we could concentrate on Endgame and That's make that That's good. Great. We can add the rest of the acts For new players, later. a 25 hour campaign is already a huge game with lots of content. But for existing action RPG players, what you mostly care about is all the in-game challenges to overcome. So several months ago, we switched the entire development team's focus over to making in-game content. At the start of Early Access, there'll be 50 bosses and around 400 monster types. 50 But the great bosses. thing is that the rest of the game is like 80% there. We'll be adding content to roughly double the size of the game during Early Access and into release. Okay. Now, in order to make the in-game happen at the same character level as what it would be after we added the rest of the acts, We've added a second difficulty level called Cruel. Ooh. We repeat the campaign with all the monsters and bosses leveled up. And of course, new rewards. You can kind of think of it as like a new game plus. It's also a lot faster to get through the content the second time as your clear speed increases. Yeah. That will take you to around not level bad. 65. I'm, I'm not against this. Begins. Once we add the remaining three acts, we'll be removing Cruel difficulty. So you'll progress straight from the end of Act 6 to end game. Okay. But okay, not bad, not bad. To explain that, I'll hand over to Mark. He can tell you all about it. Okay, let's go to Mac. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile 2. Well, one thing that Path of Exile is known for is yeah. having a lot of distinct in-game content to choose between. Each in-game mechanic needs to have its own progression Hi. system, areas, bosses, rewards, and player power that can only be gained from that content. We are going to be adding a lot more over time, but for Path of Exile 2, we decided to start with seven distinct systems you can progress through. This is the Atlas, and Atlas. it serves as the core of the endgame for that Path the, of Exile 2. That was the map, 2. right? It's infinite and expands in all directions. Now, we are not going to spoil the plot too much here, but corruption from the beast has blighted the land, and your objective is to help fight it. Yeah, mapping. In the center of the Atlas, you will find the Ziggurat, a temple in which the Val researched the fundamentals of space and time. Here, we can open portals to nearby locations and begin cleansing corruption and finding resources. Okay, we like that. In order to power the portal device, we will need waystones. Each waystone has a tear which will determine the level of the monsters uh -oh. that you will face. To go to an area, simply click one that is adjacent to an area that you have already completed. Stash tab, gang. Insert the waystone and click traverse. Portals will open, allowing you and your party to travel to the area you have selected. All the areas in the end game feel distinct from the locations in the campaign, Whoa! and we have dialed the randomization up to 11. The monster packs you will face in each map are totally random, and the combination of them can lead to some very interesting combat situations. There are over 400 monster types in early access, and they have a lot of varied and interesting abilities. Depending on which combinations you face, you might find some serious challenges. In order to cleanse Ooh. the corruption Ooh, from that's the area, me. you that's will me. need to defeat that's all me. the powerful, rare, and unique enemies in it. Once you have done that, the area will be marked as completed, and you will be able to Sheesh. travel past it to progress deeper into the Look at me, Chad. It looks so beautiful. If you die, then the map can no longer be run, and you will have to find another way around to get to the areas behind it. There are also all kinds when of other random early encounters release? you might uh, run into December uh, One such encounter, a precursor December 6th? artifacts. These are ancient, corrupting Two monuments from that now. irradiate the monsters around them. The monsters that feed off the corruption are drawn to their power. If you defeat the monsters and cleanse the artifact, you will get a yeah. powerful temporary buff. Some of the buffs make you faster, others rain lightning or fire around you, and some even give you increased experience or help you find better items. You can also find strong boxes. These enigmatic chests guard piles Same of treasure, Same day as a new Fortnite a and the, the First Descendant and Indiana the Jones. You open it. And the boxes often have mechanisms to unleash gaming powerful week. spells or dangerous debuffs. There are different types of strong boxes containing different items, and you can even use your currency items to craft them on the fly, so you can optimize the contents. But okay. be careful of opening one you can't handle. We like this chat. Sometimes you'll discover monsters frozen in essences, solidified crystalline corruption. These dangerous monsters can be broken free. If you defeat them, the essence they drop can be used to upgrade normal items to magic items with a guaranteed mod from a category. So, so far, it's basically For just example, Path of Exile 1. We could use Exile this one, one on some boats to ensure a movement speed Because the, these two things are in Path of Exile 1, right? Rarely, essences will also drop that allow you to upgrade yeah. magics to rares, adding the guaranteed mod.
This is incredibly powerful since it allows you to get a second deterministic mod in your crafting projects. Combining these with the currencies that are commonly found at Rayclast for modifying items, and we can get a very nice pair of boots indeed. It's old League Mechanics revamp. Waystones, like all items, can also be crafted using your currency items. Adding prefix mods will improve the rewards, while suffix mods increase danger. danger. The more dangerous a map is, the more waystones will drop. Oh, that lady's pregnant Adding dead on the ground. Adding mods to your waystones is key to progressing to higher tiers and sustaining them, but it will require you to take on larger challenges. There are a variety of factors you have to consider when crafting your waystones. Ooh, some maps I love that have crossbow. higher density, some lower, some have more magic and rare chests, or monsters, some are more linear Shield and bash, others more open. Boom. Make sure you explore Me. and think about what makes certain maps good. Ellie, they should call this form Ellie. As the you fire corruption witch. from higher and higher tiers of the atlas, you will gain points that you can spend in the atlas tree. This tree allows you to juice the danger and rewards of all areas in the endgame. You could increase the number of monsters, the number of rares, the number of precursor artifacts or strongboxes, even the quantity of item drops. As you explore the endgame world map, you'll notice various different biomes. From snow-capped mountains Atlas to tree, deep jungle log valleys, in. most maps are restricted to certain biomes. As you continue to explore deeper into the Let Atlas, me in. there are all sorts of things to discover. These cities are constructed by different peoples of Rayclast and have specific items that can be found there. These strange structures marked on the map don't appear to do anything for now. Perhaps you'll work out how to use them later. You might find unique maps like Untainted Paradise, an undisturbed island full of beasts that give an extreme amount of experience. You may even find a lonely man just enjoying his retirement who will give you a unique item for free. In addition, you can find special areas that would make a good spot to set up camp. Okay. Clear these areas of their hostile inhabitants and you'll be able to claim them as your own hideout. You can decorate your hideout as you see fit and invite various NPCs to join you there. Also, you have uh, your hideout, your home. Operations. Okay. A great tool for exploration are towers. These mysterious precursor constructs are dotted around the atlas. Completing the tower will reveal a large area around it, allowing you to scout out your next challenge. There are lots of things to find, so keep looking. Some sections of your atlas Don't are Don't take the candy from the old man. This adds extra modifiers to the maps in the region, increasing difficulty and rewards. Here, slaying monsters in close proximity Why to each other early will access? cause the vestiges of corruption it's, within um, them to merge together, forming powerful and grotesque abominations. You may have noticed while looking at the atlas that some of the areas better, have these icons above them. Business the strategy icon indicates that the area contains game out some early kind access. of special encounter. This icon indicates that the area has a powerful boss. Because only one in four maps contain a map boss, we are able to make them very powerful and very rewarding. These bosses come Is from this the game free to play? Um, difficulty not right with now. To AI You'll be able to play with this abilities. in two weeks. It's worth early access for a, a low are, price of thirty dollars plus. Or avoid them. If you um, do choose to hunt they bosses, don't have though, a then you'll be rewarded yet. with special for free. points for the boss hunting for section the free of play. the Atlas skill tree. The points here will allow you to specialize in boss killing, giving you much greater rewards for defeating them. For each different type of content in the end game, we are adding specialized trees in order to make it so you don't feel the need to respec your points when you change between different types of content. We will be showing you seven of these by the end of this presentation, so there is still a lot more to come. Bosses are not the only icon you will see on the Atlas. Let's take a look at one of the endgame systems, Breach. If you played PoE 1, you might be familiar with Breach. For PoE 2, Breach. we have created sequels to several PoE 1 leagues. While the mechanic is familiar, the monsters, bosses, rewards, and progression are all new. A breach is a tear in the fabric of reality. Opening it will allow you to see the demons oh, and otherworldly so cool. monstrosities that lie in wait on this other plane of existence. By engaging with a breach, you'll create a bridge like between the breach, their world chat. and Rayclast. I'm a breach. In order I'm to keep the breach open, asshole. you will need to kill the demons that pour forth. The faster you can kill the monsters, the more monsters you will fight, and the more loot you will find. You can also find clasped hands that will Son open of a and drop breach. more items if you run over them. These can be a good boost to the rewards of the breach, so keep an eye on them. Yeah. One of the rewards that you may find while fighting monsters from breach are tablets. Tablets are special items that can be used with precursor towers to add more encounters to the atlas. 
Okay. Breaches will drop breach tablets. More mob Clicking density. Clicking on the completed tower will allow you to consume the tablet. I'm in back! In your fight to hold the breach demons at bay, you may I'm want back. to use the powers of their world against them. Each in-game mechanic always has player power that can only be gained from She's that She's back! I don't know the what's going on, no chat, with my Wi-Fi. you will find catalysts. With my internet. Items that can increase the quality sorry. of rings and amulets by improving I'm specific sorry. mods. I'm sorry. You can also find breach rings, a special base type a that can breach have its improved by catalysts up to 50%. In this case, you can create breach. a ring with around 170 life. Breach rings can become some of the strongest rings in the game, giving you some good motivation. That was quick. To yeah, my walls. um, addition, I don't know what's going on. Each in-game mechanic needs to have a pinnacle in-game encounter. While killing breach monsters, you may find breach splinters. What the breach? Collect enough of these, and you'll be able to create a breach stone. Using a vile technology called the Realm Gate, you can use your breach stone to access their domain and bring the fight to them. Yeah. In this twisted domain, you will find nothing but a single massive breach. Triggering it will reveal hordes of breach inhabitants. I love the way they, they made breach look in this in this game with the purple hue that expands and retracts. And should you be fast enough, you will be able to fight That's their pretty nice. Zisht. We that are I'm a breach enjoyer, chat. It's always been like that? I thought it was a little bit different. I thought the color was different. Maybe I'm thinking about a different system. Uh, early access will last up until the game actual release. And that has not been announced. The actual release of the game has not been announced. And I don't think they will. This is just one of the pinnacle encounters of Fury Ooh, Eternal. chat, this looks nice. Them, so you will have to discover them for yourself. Sheesh! Assured, Lost Ark is, is dead, chat. When Path of Exile 2 comes out, it's going to be the final blow to Lost Ark. We still have the progression system. Defeating Zesht will give the you final points blow. to into the breach section of the Atlas Tree. Allocating these points will make breaches and the breach domain even harder. Hello, but Mr. Menace. will give you more rewards. The small nodes will increase the difficulty of the twisted domain, while the large nodes have more specific bonuses. For example, this node adds more clasped hands to your breaches and adds a pack of magic monsters that can guard them. Get some more points and you can allocate Sheesh. Waking Night, which will double the number of splinters you get from Look at the, the mob density, chat. This is kind of nice. And mysterious debuff. And it looks so good. In order so to earn good. more points, you will need to defeat Zesht at a higher difficulty, and some rewards from Zesht can only be found by increasing the difficulty of the Twisted Domain above certain thresholds. Defeating Zesht at difficulty See, 4 who? will be a challenge indeed. But oh, there are many more ass. threats in Rayclast. Ritual altars Ritual. are sacrificial sites built by the mysterious king in the mists. If you encounter this symbol on the atlas, then you know that the area contains ritual altars. Yeah. Ritual altars demand tribute. Every monster you slaughter in the circle will feed the altar. After the sacrifice, touch it to begin the ritual. The monsters you just killed will be resurrected by the king of the mists' dark magic, and you must fight to survive. Dude, somebody's on their period the here. The you have offered to the altar can be spent to buy powerful Look items. at these blood but clots. But they can be expensive. To gain more tribute, you will oh, want to find more Oh my altars. lord. Each successive ritual you do within an area will spawn the monsters revived by the previous ones, in addition to the ones you sacrifice next to them. By the end of an area, you will be fighting a truly imposing number of foes, but will have a significant amount of tribute to spend. One of the rewards you can buy with tribute are omens. These are special items that allow for metacrafting. Crafting items that affect other crafting items. Have an item with good prefixes but bad suffixes? This omen will help you to remove the mod you don't want while keeping the ones you do. There well, you are a bunch more now. of these with different effects, but we will leave them for you to discover. Now don't forget that Ritual will also drop tablets, which can be used to specialize into getting more Rituals. If you want to get to the pinnacle boss of Ritual, then you will probably want to use them. They can also be crafted Fractured to grab mods, making rewards. your Rituals more rewarding. The pinnacle encounter of Ritual is the King in the Mists. Feared by the Asmeri people, he is said to have brought eternal darkness to the Wildwood. We won't show the Eternal encounter, but darkness. just like Breach, there are a range of unique items you can get for defeating him, and you will gain points in the ritual section of the Atlas Tree. Some maps have been touched by insanity. A mysterious entity has taken a special interest in you. 
Step through the looking glass and you will find your nightmares coming to life. When you touch a mirror, Ooh. the mists of delirium will spread out across the area, infecting your mind. You must stay within the mist to maintain the nightmare, which Ooh. is as profitable as it is terrifying. Everything you kill will increase the rewards that drop. However, the this deeper into cool. the mist you travel, the stronger the monsters are. Be careful not to overstay your welcome. Rare and unique enemies will become vessels for terrifying uh, demons. This is what I confuse the breach with. It's the mirror thing. The mist also offers a strange crafting material. Oh. Distilled emotions. By combining these emotions, you are able to instill your amulet with a notable from the passive skill tree. Yeah, these are this the ones like that I was thinking of. This is gaining an extra of. passive point for free, attached to your gear. They are also particularly great because you don't have to traverse the tree to get them, allowing you to get off-class bonuses that would normally be much harder to get. Distilled emotions can also be used to instill your in-game maps, applying Delirious to them and adding additional difficulty and rewards, allowing you to further juice your in-game maps. The tablets you can find Will from I Delirious carry can you? be used to further improve. No, I'm, I'm hardcore size, solo self-found. dissipate slower, or improve your progress towards the I don't pinnacle play with encounter people. of Delirium. Speaking of which, You'll only slow every me down. now and then you will find Simulacrum Splinters. The mysterious entity will create strange encounters based on warped versions of your own memories. Monsters and Simulacrums come in waves. This is a delirium from Path of Exile 1. You will receive loot at the end of each wave, and you will have to make the decision to leave now or continue on, facing up against even tougher foes from the mist. The bosses you will face as you get deeper into a Simulacrum are truly terrifying. If you can complete a simulacrum, you will gain points for the delirium section of the Atlas skill tree. Next up, we have Hardcore Expedition. solo self found. Occasionally, while clearing Free to play. you will encounter these Kalgurin settlers. The Kalgurins have discovered ancient burial sites Ooh, with lost this looks so artifacts, pretty right here. and they want you to help dig them up with explosives. The Kalgurans have marked the location so where the really relics can be found. So this really is just Path of Exile 1 with a prettier coat. Can to dig up as many as possible. There is <laughs> just one problem. Corruption has brought the corpses There's of their ancestors to life. Nothing really so new. You might have to do a little cleanup before you can reclaim the artifacts. You can also find remnants. The destruction of which will further anger the restless dead. Each one you I block they would... the subsequent monsters more I'm gonna powerful, let them cook and but finish, but rewarding. I thought they were gonna announce like new things. Danic, Rock, There's Tujin, nothing new Winner here. We'll exchange the artifacts for useful items and runic magic. You can also find tablets to increase the number of expeditions and the rewards. This one increases the radius of explosives. There is a lot. While this one increases well, new, the number classes, of remnants yeah. you will find. Classes, yes. But their system Eventually, you might discover a log of like these, these in-game things they've been showing is and Path of Exile 1. Essentially one giant dig site. Here you can create an extremely long chain of explosives and go through a very high number of remnants. But be careful. Many remnants have mods that can rarely break your build. So you will probably want to avoid these ones. If you add too many oh, remnants, me. you could easily make the encounter harder than you can handle. There are all sorts of interesting things buried under the ground in logbooks. You might find dripping caves and hidden Why pirate Why would they caches, bring new but systems? But the most powerful encounter is Ulrof, Why the not? ancient <laughs> undead commander of the Knights of the Sun. Defeating him oh, wait, will bring you unique rewards, as well as points to spend in the expedition section of the Atlas Tree. So those are the in-game systems on the Atlas, but we are not done yet. The trials we talked about earlier have much more content when you get to in-game 2. Just like the other in-game systems, they also have progression mechanics, unique rewards, and player power that can only be gained from them. As you get higher level coins for the trial of the Sycamers, you will unlock more floors Oh, this to is explore. a trials. Each floor has its own Ooh. challenging rooms and a floor boss that you will need to kill. He sounds Danish or Swedish. I think they're... Uh... There are four floors in total, New leading New Zealand? to another pinnacle boss Australian? at the end of the last floor, which can only be accessed at end game. The Trial of the Sycamers is where you'll find jewels, which you can socket into your tree. These are like passives that you can craft with your currency items. They can be really powerful as they allow you to stack modifiers that may not be easily accessible on the tree normally. This jewel gives lightning damage and shock chance, for example. There are quite a few jewel sockets on the tree, so it's possible to gain a lot of power here. There are also other types of jewels that don't provide any bonuses themselves, but affect other passives surrounding them. This jewel increases the effect of small nodes and radius by 25%. 
With careful placement in the tree, you could get a significant amount of power from it. There are also unique jewels available with very interesting effects, but you will have to find those for yourself. In order to push further into the trial and uncover the secrets further of the Marrakesh, into the trial. you will want to take advantage of its progression system, relics. Relics are items that can be placed okay. at the relic altar as you start the trial. They give special bonuses that affect the trial, making it easier and increasing its rewards. Of course, you can craft these with your currency items, making them even stronger. If you can complete the entire trial overcoming all four floors, the final boss will reward you with one of many unique relics. These relics will be consumed when used on your next run, but can reward you with unique and powerful items. For example, this is the Last Flame. If you use it, you will have only one honor for the entire trial. So you will need to do a completely Dude, look at all the run. minions, chat. Oh my god. What? She's dumb. The Trial of Chaos That's me. also extends into the endgame. As you gain inscribed ultimatums of higher and higher levels, the number of chambers that you can go through increases. In true Val style, this allows you to take even more risks for even more rewards. At endgame, you can progress through up to 10 chambers with three bosses on a go. single run. We Stacking need a, a, 10 uh, tribulations some on top go. of each other will make this a significant challenge, but it's worth it. The Trial Master will tempt you with items of the Val Empire, such as Val Orbs. Val Orbs are powerful crafting items that corrupt your gear with random, mysterious outcomes. Corruption prevents an item from being modified further, so it has to be the last step of your craft. But it's also the most impactful one. For example, if you use one on your body armor, okay. it might add a new powerful enchantment, or it might reroll up to half of its modifiers. Val Orbs also have the ability to add a socket, allowing you to bypass the normal restriction of how many sockets an item can have. A body armor Ooh. could get up to three sockets this way, allowing for a significant number of mods. I do like that they removed the Val um, Orbs can chain even link, modify uniques. though. Adding enchantments or sockets I like that the sockets on the powerful. gear but now are just like for gems. Break them as well. The Trial Master I, I like will that. also occasionally offer you soul cores. Originally formed by Chaos, the Val sought to replicate soul cores through human sacrifice rituals. I, I definitely and was not a fan of like civilization. gambling soul for cores chain are links and all that. Items, with mods that cannot be obtained Six from chain link. rooms. Like all in-game content, there is of course a pinnacle boss. The final chamber will drop keys to this mysterious door. Some say this is where the trial master himself resides. Perhaps you are willing to take the risk to find out. Yeah, for solo cell phone, that, that's some. Um, because there is still just very one punishing. More thing, the most I would difficult imagine. content in Path of Exile 2. While mapping, you might come across this fortress that has emerged from underground, surrounded by an enormous maze riddled with danger. Riddled is the maze preventing something from getting in or something getting out? This fortress is of ancient origin, and its construction has similarities to the towers so and tablets that you've been using on your journey through uh, the in this game. And it is understand clear from the that what there is going on. Keys required to enter. Local factions are vying for honest, access to the fortress in order to seize the power they believe will be inside. If you're planning to get each of the factions into Path of Exile, to get their hands on I, the keys, I would advise so you, you to, to do defeat. it early on. Each faction is led by an Uber Before Act they boss. start adding more and more and more and more city. systems, but in order to fight him, you will first need definitely to defeat get in early. In the adjacent zones. Be careful. If you fail against either of the lieutenants or to kill the leader, they will move on and you will need to find them again. Kill all the uber bosses and you will gain access to the fortress. We aren't going to spoil it as we can't wait to see you guys attempt it for the first time. But is there a tree you get points in after killing it? Of course there is. This is Path of Exile. There is always another tree. Yeah. So these are your challenges for Peewee 2. As you can see, this project is crazy huge. Way bigger than even we expected when we started out. But how do you gain access? Well, during early Here we access, go, you'll need a key to get in. A thousand dollars. The Peewee supporters who have spent more than 480 US dollars will be giving you guys a key for the PC version for free. <laughs> Anyone else who wants one can get one by purchasing one of the new early access supporter packs that have just been released to the store. If you just want early access to Peewee 2, then you can get a key in the 30 US dollar early access pack. Okay. The pack also comes with $30 of points to spend in the MTX store. Oh, 60? Okay. Let's see how bad. 100? Okay. Here we go, Chad. I have predicted. Store, and even physical items. I predicted $500. The cosmetics can be used right now in Peewee 1 and in Path of Exile 2 when early Here we go. access starts. 480? Most of this footage has oh. been recorded in Path of Exile 1. That's the max? Since that's where you can use them immediately. The Lord of Ogham supporter pack contains a cosmetic armor set befitting of the Count of Ogham himself. 
There is also a matching back attachment which has an alternate variant depicting the influence of corruption. Also in this pack, you can find a portal formed of the rusted armor of the fallen soldiers in the Red Vale of Ogham, and the offspring of a vicious crowbell boss found in the hunting grounds. This one doesn't Aww, look so vicious, though. Aw, that's so cute! Aww. That's worth $480, chat. On top of that, receive chat. the Iron Count's Zweihander to Buying apply it. to your one-handed or two-handed swords. For those who are wanting to decorate your hideouts with fond memories and tales of Path of Exile's history, you will also get a series of hideout statues. This pack contains the statue of Hillock. Hillock. For Path of Exile 1's closed beta, each pack contained a true New Zealand Squawk! icon, the Kiwi. A Kiwi. Following this tradition, all packs in this series will also contain a new themed Kiwi pet. The pet will loyally follow you into battle, but run away at the first sign of trouble. Become the ruler of the desert with the king of the Faradun supporter pack. Show your mastery of traversing the sands of the Vasteri Show plains. your wallet is the what he wants to say. To glide along the ground Show your wallet. Sand magic. Now each armor set comes with body armor, boots, gloves, and helmet. But the boots are covered in sand. If you'd prefer to show them off, you can turn the gliding off if you want. The accompanying back attachment equips you with two powerful pillars that can control and manipulate lightning. They will periodically release their energy in a powerful blast while in town and hover in a circle around you, arcing lightning between them, forming a barrier of energy. Replace the appearance of any bow with the Faradun's glory skin. Ooh. Or replace the appearance of a spear with the Tyranny's end spear skin. This spear skin can be applied to staves and war staves in Path of Exile 1. This skin doesn't look bad. If you want to truly show your worth as a king of the Faradun, then you definitely need your trusty, moving, entire city fortress known as the Dreadnought to travel across the Vasteri Plains. What? In Path of Exile, you can decorate your hideout however you like, and it's no exception here. It comes with a variety of what? thematic elements to use, or use decorations from elsewhere in the game. Is this your hideout? Additionally, That's you will nice. get the Deshret's Blessing Level Up effect. Damn! That's the King of the Faradun five hundred dollars right here. And last but not least, a statue depicting the Vile Oversoul from Path of Exile One. For those who don't know how a supporter pack works, the hideout work, is pretty nice. Comes though. With all of the cosmetics from the previous tier, so you'll get all the items from the Lord of Ogham supporter pack as well. The Thaumaturge of the Val supporter pack features an armor set and back attachment themed around the Val and their pursuit mm -hmm. of science and progress. You can find the Soul Core weapon effect in this pack, which causes Thaumaturgic energy harnessed from sacrifice to spill okay. from your weapon. I like this outfit. This pack also contains Doyani's idol. It replaces the default appearance of any foci to an ancient relic once used by Doyani. That was the cheaper and this can be pack? To shields in part oh of my god, was that the cheaper pack? That's not oh the my only god, chat, we're not at the $500 yet. It also yet. contains the wand of oh the Formaturge skin. Are they going to send me an Elon and Musk the um, robot skin. for the $500 pack? You wouldn't think to put sacrificial gems on a Kiwi, but the Val did. Thaumaturge of the Val supporters will receive the Thaumaturge of the Val Kiwi pet. And the statue of Dominus. Yes. Gender this is also the first pack in the series with Path a physical of Exile item. exists. When purchasing this pack, you'll receive a Path of Exile 2 logo t-shirt. But if you don't want one, you can opt out and return for additional points to spend in the store. How much is this one? This Becoming one's $60, I think. Becoming a warlord of the think. Kaurui supporter will grant you this an This one is $60, right, chat? Adorned in jade carvings and iridescent feathers resembling power. Enough to even impress the ancestral gods, specifically Tukuhama, the Kaurui god of war. Dude, this is an ugly outfit. <laughs> Oh. Overkill, you say? I think the Kaurui people would disagree. Never mind. It's Why not cool. drop a gigantic totem on rare enemies you slay to crush them to a pulp? That's Replace so cool. your crafting bench in your hideout with the Ancestral Canoe Crafting Bench, where Ancestral the Chief Mata one was will summon a giant canoe plus. manned by Kaurui warriors to aid in your crafting desires. We must all start somewhere. This one is 240 now, okay. You'll also get a pair of weapon skins. Equip Akoya's Felling Axe skin to your one-hand or two-handed axes, or Tukuhama's Crusher to your one-handed or two-handed maces. A true Kaurui warlord is always accompanied by their trusty Kiwi. Equipped with armor and Way harnessing too much ancestral money? magic, they make the perfect sidekick. I I don't mind this because this is Once all cosmetic. Once one of the most feared beings in Rayclast, Malachi this is was only slain for by a appearance, exile. for looks. May the statue commemorate the virtue I of Exile's past, present, and future. 
I'd rather them sell me one thousand dollar skins than some fucking extra exp too. boost By becoming shit. A warlord of the Kuri supporter, you'll also get a part I will never be against pretty. cosmetics. Our final tier of supporter pack in the series is oh, the Liberator Oh, this is five hundred dollars, chat. Here we go. The Liberator of Rayclast armor set and back attachment come made Goodbye, with the Lassar. finest materials in Rayclast. And shattered glass mosaics suspended in divine power. Set up your base of operations in the Beacon of Salvation hideout. Why restrict yourself to just one island when you can liberate more? The Beacon of Salvation hideout comes equipped with your own collection of Ooh, small islands chat. and personal operators of boats Look at that this you can use to row between them. Huh? Just walk to the piers, click a boat to enter and navigate as you choose. Decorate each island as you see fit to best represent your well-earned hideout. Everyone in your well hideout earned? can use their own boat. Why not have uh, some races? $500. <laughs> You can also get the window to twilight portal effect a beautiful mosaic piece of art that shatters and reveals a gateway to your desired destination as you approach it good job chat you as have you a job away, the glass magically reforms back you to earned its original it form. <laughs> rule and style with the throne of the ruler map device sure oh this map device can create my lord maps, maps but it also comes with a throne you can sit on to oversee your growing kingdom Look down on the plebeians Damn. running your Look maps. down at the peasants who only bought a thirty dollar pack. Being though, is not just about sitting on your throne all day. If you do decide to join the fight yourself, you can leave a high priest in charge as your second in command. Liberator of Rayclass supporters will also get a set of varied weapon skins. Yeah. The Light of Divinity Scepter skin. The Deliverance Crossbow skin. The Justice Flail skin. And the Redemption Justice. Shield skin. Once again, you'll have an accompanying kiwi, and of course a statue depicting oh one of the most god, iconic chat, events in Oh my god, my kiwi's worth history. more than your lungs, Jack. The battle between a powerful exile my little and kiwi in um, my path of exile is going to be worth With more than your lungs. With the help of two sin and innocence, the exile was able to defeat him once and for all. This supporter pack also contains the Path of Exile 2 art book. This 215-page full-color art book includes a huge amount of amazing me, concept art me. and lore produced during the don't long exciting journey please, of Don't show vagina, please. Don't show vagina, please. Don't show. Please don't. And finally, oh, Path God. of Exile has a tradition of letting the community participate in designing game features. For Path of Exile 2, we'll be adding the Twilight Order Foil Reliquary. What? By becoming a Liberator of Rayclass supporter, once Path of Exile 2 is released, you'll be able to select any unique item you have found and be able to drop it from the Reliquary. Once players have submitted their items, keys to the Reliquary will start dropping, and other players what will be able to find mean? foil versions of uniques that you have submitted, along with a message for the lucky player. The more players submit the same unique, the more chances there will be for the reliquary to drop them. So choose wisely. Now, almost all of these items are available to use in POE 1 right now. There are a few exceptions where the item class clearly doesn't exist, such as crossbows or flails. And there are also a few microtransactions on Look weapon types chat. that are unavailable in POE 2 at the start of early access. Once classes that use those oh, weapon types we're are added, zooming now, those boys. microtransactions will be available to use. Oh my god! If you can't decide which supporter pack to choose yet, you can always start with the early access supporter pack that just includes a key and some points to spend in the store. Then you can upgrade oh, wait, to that any was of the Path following of XL tiers 1? at a later date. These supporter packs will be available for purchase throughout early access. We'd really like to thank you for your ongoing support. Without you guys, Path of XL 2 could not have happened. Now, I'm sure you guys have a lot known. of questions. Stick around, because coming up next, we have a live Q&A with Ziggy D. Ooh, not Ziggy D. <laughs> what kind of name is that? Okay, so for those who you, uh, of you guys who do not understand, um, I'll try to summarize this a little bit. Path of Exile 2 will be released in two weeks from now on early access. This is not the full release of the game. There's a couple of acts that still will be missing. Um, if you want early access, you either have to have spent $480 plus on Path of Exile 1, and you're automatically included in the early access for Path of Exile 2, or spent $30, $60, $180, $240, or $480. And you already saw what you could get with that. Um, the game does not have a release day, so if you do want to play Path of Exile 2, you have to spend money. The game will be free when it actually launches with the rest of the content. Uh, I'm excited though, Chad. I'm excited. Uh, I think when the date gets a little bit closer, I'm going to be doing giveaways for, for this. For early access packs. I'll be doing some early access for my chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Not so fast. Hit that subscription button before you head out. How about that?